company. So um, I figured that I would answer a question, which is about logic analyzers and um, you know how they seem to work with like uh, the uh, Bearcat 980 SSB and capturing the PLL data packets. Um, the answer that I gave was just get a Sally logic. Um, of course, the the uh, uh, the rebuttal to that was, well, I don't want to spend a whole lot of money. Is there something else? And I know of the knockoffs on eBay, such as like this one. Um, so I decided to get one and see how well it worked. So I've been mucking around with this thing for about half an hour and um, figured I would just show everybody how it is. Uh, I'd use the uh, 980 uh, as an example. Um, mine has Saley written here. It's clearly not. It's a, it's a, it's a ripoff. Um, you know, and they even tell you to go get the software from Saley. It's just wrong to do that. Um, but I do know that the SIGROC stuff worked with it, which is what this is. is pulse view. Uh, this is like uh, uh, 0.4. It's like a nightly. It works with all these things. And I didn't know this. So I'm actually going to fool around with it, see what else that uh, that I can tinker around with here. I mean, we've got Rigel stuff we've got you know goss and metrots and flukes and brymans and multi, you know all the multimeters and some uh you know, agilent uh some stuff in here um you know a hand tag some ham ham egg and gw intact and stack a whole bunch of stuff so i was gonna fool around with it and um and see how well it works with other stuff. <laughs> Even a LaCroix Logic Studio, really? Okay. Um, so anyways, this is a capture of the um, the radio's data bus. And I have three chip enabled or load lines for three of the four peripherals. Um, the one that I don't care about is the VHF receiver. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Um, got the chip chip enable for the PLL, which is a, pull, a high when we're talking to the PLL, the expander, 24-bit IO, which is this guy. It's a low when we're talking to him. And this DAC that's up on the front panel, it's used for the uh, LCD uh, display. It's pulsed very regularly. So the, the bus has a fair bit of chatter uh, on it from this DAC. Um, and this DAC's just 10 bits, um, you know, nothing fancy. So there's the decoder, this is 10 bits. Um, it's the same 10 bits unless you like change the brightness or score something to, to, to change with the, uh, with the LCD. It's the same data. It's just pulsed over and over and over again. So we run it it's, it's just pulsed over and over and over again. But this is the, the, the DAC is the uninteresting stuff. Um, I just have it here so that we can see when the DAC is getting fired so that we can look at the PLL and the expander and know when or what to ignore. Um, so needless to say, the radio is on channel 20. I'm going to change it from 20 to 21 while this is running 21. And we're going to look and see what happens. First thing that the radio does is it talks to the expander and it sets, um, these various things, um, whenever it decodes it, there it goes. And we set this, these modes. Okay, so these pins, you know, various uh, ones and zeros. We set this data. Then the second thing we do is we start talking to the PLL. So, and I'm not sure why this gets all wonky. It puts a zero in here, and it, it, it just seems to do it with the PLL. Like the timing's a little bit tight or something like that. So if I just change this and then change it back, it seems to decode it properly. Um, but if you look at this first packet, and we look at the PLL. First packet sends a reference. These things are out of order. Don't ask me why. References first. Um, and we set these uh, 14 bits for the uh, reference. Okay. So that would be these eight. And then um, uh, this is uh, these and then these six. So um, the rest of these are... Uh, the various options for uh, these registers, uh, at least on this reference here. So we got these are all for the various options and for the IDs. So we have lock detection options, we have ID options, we have this PL and PH. So if we look at the PL and PH, um, which is going to be these two, which are zeros, um, PL and PH, two zeros, it's PLL. 
So we're set. We're, tell, we're we're setting it to be a PLL. We have don't care for the next two bits, and then we have LD zero and LD one, and that's uh, these two bits were also zeros. Okay, uh, LD zero and LD one, both zeros is LD pin for lock detect on when unlocked. So if the pin is high, it just turns the pin. It you know, sets a high on that pin. So it's on when it's unlocked, which makes perfect sense. And then last but not least, we have of course these do not cares, and then we have these ID pins. Um, we're looking at this ID zero is a zero, and ID one is a one when we're on TX. Um, which I'll get into that in a minute, but bear with me. Um, TX, so we have a zero and a one. Now, why do we have a TX and an RX? Well, this is a dual PLL, but you also have to keep in mind this radio only uses one of them. We're using this side of the PLL, the TX side, but these are not connected. So if you're setting any PLL options, you think about it, you're only setting the PL, the TX. Otherwise, if we were using both, you would see four packets because we would have to set four registers. So right now we're just setting the TX registers. So that's the first uh, packet. And since this is the reference packet, it should virtually be the same every single time we change the channel because it's the reference. Um, now, the actual divider itself, um, to keep in mind that this is going to change every time we change the channel. So for channel 20 to 21, we have uh, E8. We just jot that down right quick, 0C and zero, 00. So those are three bytes. Um, and just looking at the uh, the register for those three bytes, we have uh, the ID bits, you know, which at the end, just like in the other register, um, ID zero and ID one are both zeros. And that's because we're setting the TX side once again, zero and zero. And then we have these other various options, which are just, uh, other things that I haven't quite figured out what they do, um, you know, like for the phase and things like that. Um, so, but these are all zeros as well, and the radio sends all zeros. So we're just not using, doing anything really fancy with these registers as it is. At least we're just leaving them all zeros. So I do the same thing. And then, of course, we have the 16 programmable divider inputs, which is these two byte uh, bits, uh, two bytes right here. So... Um, E8 and 0C. Basically, when we change channels in this radio, the only <laughs> the only two bytes that are going to really effectively change in these two packets is these two right here. So that was changing from channel 20 to 21. We set the mode. We changed the frequency, the, the divider. We set the mode again, and then we like set the mode again. I I, I don't get this three setting of the like modes, but I'll eventually figure out why it's doing it. I think that that's just a laser programmer, but because um, remember, we're looking at their uh, what they're sending from the original MCU and the radio, the the uh, the Renesis original one on the front panel. I'm not sending this from my code. This is Unidense. What Unidense is sending this PLL. So if I change the channel from 21 to 22 and you know run this this capture uh run it change the channel and you can see that we've changed the channel and uh you know of course we're gonna you know hit the modes um as well of course right here we hit the modes again that's which finally the decoder hit so we just hit the modes change the frequency hit it again so let's look at the first one what's the first one Zero 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 eight eighty, and of course it's gone weird again. So <laughs> this didn't change from twenty one to twenty two. It wouldn't. It it shouldn't change. There's no reason to change the the, the the reference. However, let's look at the actual uh, divider. E A zero C zero zero. Remember before we had E eight zero C zero zero. So we went from 21 to 22, and we changed these only this one because remember we didn't even change it that much. We just changed it one channel, so we just changed all the least significant bits. 
um, you know, very, um, you know, we, we just toggle a few bits. So if we, if we just get a calculator here and we, um, uh, you know, we go to uh, programmer and we put in um, uh, a hexadecimal for uh, E8. Okay, so we have E8. And there's our, our, our byte right there. So, um, you know, so we have E8. This is what we had for channel 21. And we look at this, we have 1110. Okay, remember, we got to read these backwards. So remember, we're going to read these backwards. Um, 1110, uh, 1000. Zero, zero, zero. So we changed this one right here from a zero to a one. And that's all we did. Um, and that changed the channel. So there you have it. Um, it's pretty simple when you get it explained to you, I guess, and you look at it in a, a logic analyzer. And this is, again, this is why these tools are so useful. So what's the verdict that I, that I have on this, um, on the Sig Rock stuff, Pulse View, and the uh, the knockoff uh, Sailor Logic is that for this kind of work for for doing this, I think it works just fine. Um, there's actually very little difference other than this weird just issue with this decoder um, with this particular uh, data from the PLL. It's like the timings are just enough to confuse this. Uh, this decoder on this particular PLL. Um, it's just enough to confuse it, but it just seems to me that if you just, f it gets it right even then. So if I just read this again, I go back to 21, just make sure that we have the same data, and then I change the channel, and then we just look at this PLL data where it's got it, it's still 000880. It's just, it's just stuffed this extra zero in here. Um, and, and gotten confused, you know, um, and like that extra one on the end, um, you know, it's gone lock up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like got this extra one, this extra zero. It's just gotten confused. I think the timings on this are just a little bit, a little, and it may be just how they're sending the data from this microcontroller. It's just a little bit a little bit wonky um and it have, could be everything to do with um with that mcu i mean that looks to me really just a little bit and that may be it right there that may be all the issue it's just a little bit you know a little bit out that timing those some of these timings here so that may be what's confusing it um you know because if you look at that um, and this is where it's, it's the start timing may be a little bit confusing to it. This is what I would suspect it is. It's just the start timings are just a little bit for this decoder. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure you really can't set anything in here to, uh, muck around with the start timings. Um, so, I mean, I guess for what it is, it, it works just fine. If you, as long as you know that there could be a quirk like that, um, and you could pretty much see it there anyway. Um, so, anyway, the verdict I have is, if you really want to uh, muck around with stuff like this, I think this will work fine. Uh, this this little knockoff. But I would suggest getting the real Sailor Logic if you're going to. Um, uh, you know, be serious about that, about this stuff. Um, I've got a Logic 8. It's all I've ever really needed. It works just fine for me. Um, you know, I've not tried to, I've not tried to get this thing much over four megahertz. And here's another thing while I'm thinking about it. The sample rate's somewhat important. So let's say we do uh, 1 million samples at, say, 25 kilohertz. Now take note to how the, the, at the frequency, let's just turn these decoders off so we don't see these if we take note of the frequency of the dac uh writes which is what these pulses are and we see that we have them just very consistently and very evenly i mean these things you could you could set your watch by these things because these things look like they're like every 10 hertz or so like they're happening fairly quickly if we run this at this low sample rate you're missing a lot of data. Those things happen very quickly. Um, 
10 hertz. No, that I would be willing to bet that they're probably happening. At, this is probably happening at, at several megahertz. It's actually happening fairly quickly. But you see, we're hap missing. We're missing a lot of it. So this is very important. Your the speed of your bus. Um, the faster it is, the higher you're going to have to sample it at. That's why I was sampling this thing at four megahertz. Is because I suspect that the speed, it, well, the speed, the observed speed uh, this bus is running at, can, seems to vary anywhere from between one and three megahertz, depending on who it's talking to. So, um, you know, it, and probably CPU load and all that. If you change the channel really fast on the radio, it seems to sort of bog. Uh, bog it down a little bit. It's just happening too quickly for it. So the MCU, I think, slows down. Um, so, but it's still within tolerances, you know, so it's still con it's still sending its data just fine. It's just happening slower. So they must be doing the uh, a lot of this uh, bit banging and a bit, they're, they're bit banging some of this data um, in, in the microcontroller because that's the only explanation. So if I sample this at one megahertz, it's still too slow. It's still happening faster than that. So 2 megahertz, this is, seems to be where it's, it gets fairly consistent. Of course, we need to up our sample rate so that we can see more. But now it's gotten consistent. But the other devices in the, in the bus, even though we're good with the DAC, um, the expander, for example, I think it happens faster than 2 megahertz as far as it's um, uh, the data that's pulsed to it. So things are happening at different at different rates uh, uh, on this bus, um, which I'm not really too sure why, but they are. Um, so you have to sample faster than, you know, the fastest thing that's on the bus, which I deduced would be, for this particular one, just from trial and error, is 4 megahertz. So everything seems to be captured properly when I'm 4 megahertz. Now, 24 megahertz... Um, you know, it seems to be going, it seems to work. Um, I don't know how well, looking at the, how slow the, um, uh, the decoder is going, I would be willing to bet that there probably is 24, uh, 20 meg samples at 24 megahertz. I mean, you could just see how tight these pulses are. Um, so anyway, what's the verdict? I think that this will work. Um just fine. So if you're looking for a really cheap, um, uh, you know, logic analyzer, something that you can do or muck around with your various uh, adventures in CB land, uh, for lack of a better way of explaining things, um, this should work just fine. Now, how do I get this thing back to a sane value here? Um, software... You know, it could be it could be better, but you know what? You can't really complain for free, because that's essentially what this is. This is free, so uh, free software, uh, ten dollar logic analyzer. I think you got nothing to worry about, especially if you're going to do some, you know, poke around with a CB like this hobby stuff. I think this is fine. So I hope that was helpful, guys. Um, any questions? Um, you know, leave them leave them for me. I'll probably be answering questions. We are going on holiday tomorrow. Um, it's you know Saturday today, late Saturday. We're going to leave tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be back next week. So maybe I'll take some, um, you know, quick videos on the phone kind of thing and, uh, and upload them uh, while I throw a hook in the water just to taunt you guys. <laughs> anyway, till next time, guys. Uh, take care of yourselves. Catch you later.